This video was brought to you by Brilliant, and the first 200 people to use the link below will get 20% off an annual premium subscription. Unless you've been living in a cave, you'll be aware that the Prime Minister resigned as the leader of the Conservative Party last week, and as such, we're at the beginning of a Conservative leadership election, with the first round set to commence this afternoon. As such, we thought it would make sense to go through each of the candidates, looking at their ideology, their history, and what they may do if they get the keys to number 10. So, in this video, we're going to go through each of the candidates in order of the number of endorsements they have. But before we do that, let's quickly set the scene and explain the rules of the contest. Tory leadership campaigns have two stages, an elimination campaign through MPs' votes, and then a head-to-head -head members' vote. In the first stage, MPs vote in a secret ballot for their preferred candidate, and at the end of each round, the candidate with the least votes is eliminated until just two candidates remain. Those two are then put to the membership of the Conservative Party, and whoever wins that vote will become party leader, and with it, inherit the position of Prime Minister. So, with that out of the way, let's start with our front runner, the former Chancellor Rishi Sunak. For a while being seen as heir apparent to Johnson, Rishi Sunak has had a turbulent few months. From being fined over Partygate to having his wife's tax affairs publicly scrutinized and challenged, at one point it looked like Sunak's stunning ascent through politics had suddenly come to a screeching halt. But in spite of this, and in spite of only having been elected in 2015, Sunak is currently the favourite to become leader, both in terms of endorsements and polling. A YouGov poll of the general public put Sunak well ahead, with 13% believing that Sunak was the best replacement for Johnson. When it comes to actual policy though, Sunak, the former Chancellor, is one of the only candidates not to openly back tax cuts. Rather, Sunak has stressed that tax cuts must wait, and has pledged to continue with his corporation tax hike from 19 to 25% next April. Sunak also has the advantage of being one of the most recognisable MPs among the general public. But as the richest MP in Parliament, some have begun to question whether you can be too rich to be Prime Minister. Moving on to second place, which is former Defence Secretary Penny Mordaunt. A candidate who might actually be better known for her appearance on ITV's celebrity diving show, Splash. As a keen advocate for LGBT rights, although there was some controversy over the weekend, and being on the left of the party, Morden is popular both in and outside of the Conservatives. When it comes to policy though, Morden's committed to cutting VAT on fuel by 50% as well as committing to raise the basic and middle earner tax thresholds by inflation. The problem is though that she hasn't gotten off to the best of starts. Her launch video has been widely ridiculed for its use of stock footage, and more specifically footage of Oscar Pistorius, the South African runner found guilty of culpable homicide of his then girlfriend, as well as some controversy surrounding her use of Joe Cox, the murdered MP for Batley and Spen. Moving down the list again, and we find Tom Tugendhat, someone who may not be that well known among the wider public, with YouGov claiming that only 27% of the public have actually heard of him. But that being said, he is highly respected within the Conservative Party. He's also regarded as a centrist, and even backed to remain during the Brexit referendum, although he did go on to be a backer of Theresa May's Brexit deal. Prior to being an MP, Tugendhat served in both the Iraq and Afghanistan wars, and his distinguished military career is probably best exemplified by his establishment of a civilian government in the Helmand province. And Tugendhat's discussed his service quite a lot, both in the Commons and in interviews. In fact, in one interview for the Today programme, he was asked what the naughtiest thing he'd ever done was, to which he replied, I invaded a country once. And more seriously, he does also lead the Foreign Affairs Select Committee. The main issue for Tugendhat, though, is his lack of experience when it comes to ministerial office. Next up, though, is someone who doesn't struggle in that regard. Current Foreign Secretary Liz Truss. Now, many of you will already know Liz Truss, as she's had a, well, pretty decorated career as a high-functioning politician. 
She's currently the Foreign Secretary, as I just said, but she's also been the Minister for Women and Equality, Secretary of State for International Trade, Justice Secretary, and DEFRA Secretary. In fact, she's even got the record of being the longest continuously serving member of this cabinet. Ideologically, though, Truss sees herself as an anti-woke libertarian, and she said that if she were to become the Prime Minister, she would start cutting taxes day one. She also wants to introduce a long-term plan to reduce the size of government. One of the issues she could run into, though, is the fact that she's quite closely linked with Boris Johnson. Many Tory MPs want a clean break from Johnson, and as such might feel that she's not the ideal candidate to rejuvenate the party. Moving down the list even further, we find ourselves with a candidate who's not unfamiliar with Tory leadership contests, Jeremy Hunt. Hunt is by far and away the most experienced candidate on this list, both in terms of ministerial experience and experience with leadership contests. Set Hunt has been Secretary of State for Culture, Olympics, Media and Sport throughout the Olympics, before being promoted to Health Secretary in 2012, a position, he held, a position that he held for six years before being promoted again to Foreign Secretary until 2019, when he stood for leadership of the party. Hunt ultimately got through to the final round before being beaten by Boris Johnson. This time round, though, Hunt's committed to an immediate cut in corporation tax to 15%, as well as a five-year business rate cut for the most in-need communities, i.e. Red Wall constituencies. Hunt would also continue with the Northern Ireland Protocol Bill, which seeks to override elements of the protocol. However, despite his experience, Hunt may struggle because he might not be able to shake off his time as a minister. Because while Hunt is the most experienced candidate on the list, he ultimately served as health secretary during a delicate time for the NHS, culminating in the junior doctor's pay dispute. A dispute that some are yet to forgive Hunt for. In sixth place on our list is current chancellor Nadim Zahawi. Having co-founded the polling giant YouGov, Zahawi rocketed to fame during the pandemic for his role as vaccines minister, a role which made him incredibly popular and well-respected among Tory MPs. During this campaign, though, Zahawi is committed to cutting the base rate of income tax to 19p by 2023, and then 18p by 2024. He also wants to temporarily abolish green levies and VAT on fuel bills for the next two years. Zahawi has also notably accused his fellow candidates of launching smear campaigns against him, with over the weekend a number of accusations being leveled against Zahawi over his tax affairs, as well as allegations that Zahawi has been under investigation by the National Crime Agency and HMRC. In a bid to refute these allegations, Zahawi is committed to publishing his full tax returns were he to become Prime Minister. Further hurting Zahawi's chances, though, are the events surrounding Johnson's downfall. That's because Zahawi was ultimately made Secretary of State for Education right up to when Rishi Sunak resigned as Chancellor, and it's been reported that Zahawi issued an ultimatum to Johnson, wanting the position of Chancellor or threatening to walk. Zahawi was then promoted to Chancellor, before subsequently proceeding to withdraw support from the Prime Minister a matter of hours later. And this back and forth might not go down well with some. Moving down the rungs yet again, we get to Kemi Bardenock. Now, like Tom Tugendhat, you might not have heard about Bardenock much before. And that's because while she has had some minor government roles, she's never been in cabinet before. Most recently, she's been the Minister for Local Government, Faith and Communities, as well as the Minister of State for Equalities. Prior to those roles, though, she proved herself as a Brexiteer, backing the cause prior to the referendum in 2016. She's also proved herself as an anti-woke warrior, winning a speech competition for Conservative Home with a speech criticising critical race theory. Specifically on critical race theory, she said that we do not want to see teachers teaching their pupils about white privilege and inherited racial guilt. In terms of her policy platform, though, she's in favour of lowering taxes and is critical of net zero. Her biggest issue in this race, though, is just the fact she doesn't have much name recognition or even that much experience of high office. Next on our list, we have Suella Braverman. 
And Braverman's already come out with some big policies, saying that she wants to see the UK leave the European Convention on Human Rights, something that's led to questions about how the ECHR gels with the Good Friday Agreement, which explicitly requires the oversight of the ECHR. And this blunder is maybe unsurprising, considering that Braverman's reputation as Attorney General has been somewhat tarnished. That's because Braverman was slammed by the Bar Council for backing the Internal Markets Bill, the government's original plan to override the Northern Ireland Protocol. However, this plan would have broken international law by the government's own omission, and although she claims it was only in a specific and limited way, you can see why the Bar Council weren't all that keen on a law-breaking government. All in all then, those are the runners and riders at the moment. Those are the people who could potentially be the next Prime Minister of this country. But if you want to see it all unfold, then you should tune in to our daily live streams, where we'll be discussing the results as they come in each and every day. The very first stream is at 4pm today, and it's linked down below. So head to the stream right now, ring the bell, and be notified when we go live. Ultimately though, we'll just have to wait and see which way the Conservatives end up going. But as always, this is just a problem-solving exercise, something which is always at the heart of politics, whether it's making the electorate happy or choosing who should lead you. So if you want to be able to do what politicians often can't, then consider signing up to Brilliant. That's the STEM learning platform which actually features a class on the joy of problem-solving. In that class, like all of their others, they use active learning techniques to help you learn complex subjects, like logical reasoning, deducing facts from fiction, and logic puzzles, with you learning through fun and engaging activities. These interactive classes cover all kinds of STEM topics too, from computer science and cryptocurrency, to statistics and casino probability. So if you want to take your next step in STEM and support the channel at the same time, then you can sign up to Brilliant, and the first 200 people to use the link below will get 20% off an annual premium subscription. Thanks for your support.